Hello, uh, thank you for your participation. My name is Gilbert Nemoza. I'm presenting Spokes of Hope worldwide. So I'm glad to meet you guys, the new managers, and I would like to tell you some tips to help you be very effective in this new role that you're taking on. So in this talk, you are going to see five managing functions and three management styles. This will be very helpful in your job that you're going to perform here. That's why I decided to take this short time to be with you discussing both five management functions and three management styles. I hope you get engaged and everyone is going to get a point. So be so attentive. Let's start by five management functions. The first one is planning. The way I'm going to talk about this is just seeing what it is and we can see an example of where one can use it. So planning as a definition, it's seeing what is needed. You schedule for action, then you schedule like you plan who will do it, what action, when, where and how. We've all heard about planning and we have probably planned, let's say when you were in your school, you plan to work on an exam, you plan to do a homework. So that's the plan we are talking about in organizations, specifically here at Spokes of Hope Woodward. For you can plan to do something. Let's say, let's say an example, uh, we need a machinery worker. So the HR management will plan the recruitment process that will end up getting the required person. The other management function is organizing. What's organizing as a definition? Organizing is using available resources to achieve goals. Planning was there just to set goals to be achieved. But for you to achieve them, we need to organize. You need to use resources properly so that you achieve the goals you set. You also have to maintain uh, relationships. That's also part of organizing. You organize how the people will be interacting, collaborating. Uh, an example can be when we need to make a brown now. We are going to organize how the marketing will go. So without planning, organizing can't also work. You plan the, the, uh, the marketing plan then you're going to organize, you want to say this amount of money will be used to do website, the other amount of money will be used to pay someone who will be putting content online, all of that will be organizing. So the next management function that I want to talk about is staffing. You have all heard about staff. So staffing as a definition it can be a, a way of developing people, I mean uh, team members professionally. You look for ways to develop your people. You, let's you say you hired someone to do uh, communications management, but you realize that he has a, a small skill, I mean limited skills to perform such uh, function. For you to be really staffing properly, you can plan training just to make sure the person gets professional development. That will be part of staffing. Uh, staffing is also about job satisfaction. You reach out to employees, you know what they need, so you do it so that they get satisfied by the job they are doing, not willing to leave the company. Also, staffing includes recruiting. Let's see an example again about machinery work as we've been saying. After realizing that you need the machinery work, you're going to do staffing. You're going to recruit someone who will be doing such job. Another um, management function is controlling. Controlling as a definition is overseeing actions that are performed to achieve the plans, to implement the plans. Controlling, you control how people, you give tasks, are doing that, 
you control how the resources are being used and you evaluate strengths and weaknesses to make sure if there is an area of improvement you do it during the process and you can see how far you are achieving such goals that you set an example can be how far uh, checking or evaluating how far you are with implementation of a project let's say you had a project of helping needies in your society so you can evaluate how people are performing with their tasks you can oversee how resources are being used to make sure they are not being misused the last but not the least management function is reading many people confuse a definition of a reader with some other different things that i am not going to mention immediately but reading is not about influencing people let's say you plan that someone work on marketing uh, of uh, a new brand or uh, a new product but how are you reading you influence him you motivate him and you have to be role model that's the reading reading is taking a step of being a role model influencing people and motivate them to do a certain job an example can be if you're a reader then you say everyone has to attend workplace at 2 a.m I mean 8 a.m. You should be the one to do it. In that case, we'll be giving them an example. We'll be a role model. They're going to imitate you. And make sure if someone uh, uh, complies with the rule, you'll be well. That's part of motivating and so on. I think you got uh, the management functions, you understood them, and you were able to them on the new job that you're having let's now talk about three management styles mentioning them they are delegating uh, directing and discussing we are going to see what they are strengths and weaknesses starting by delegating delegating is assigning tasks to people involving them in actions and something to mention about delegating is that when you delegate something to an employee he's going to do it but you're the one accountable of the results let's say i delegate someone to communicate to a partner so i'm the one to be accountable of the action if the action fails i'm the one to fail if it succeeds i'm the one who succeeds but then what are the strengths strengths include employees development the employees develop due to the fact that they are involved in activities it also involves sharing duties everyone is participating there is no one person who is doing everything because our people need to perform we need to experience we need to develop it also uh, allows everyone to contribute many people have ideas many people have effort that can contribute to the development of a company so with delegating all the resources available are effectively used some of the weaknesses is that there is no perfection at some extent some people don't have necessary skills to perform certain certain activities so if they are delegated to do something there will be enough uh, perfection the other one is it requires training if you're going to do something let's say I delegated someone to do sales management and is not informed about that that will require training sessions which will be costing them the next uh, management style is directing just you understand it's giving directions overseeing you direct people what to do you tell them do this do this do this this has strengths and weaknesses some of strengths is it makes planning, organizing, and starting workable. If you plan something, you told someone do this, I mean you staffed, but you didn't direct someone do this, or do this, do this, do this, this can fail. But with directing, everything is workable, everything is actionable. It also helps in the time management. If you tell someone do this, that's very quick, 
than saying this needs to be done and everyone you want like you want someone to to initiate which is sometimes difficult it also minimizes lose i mean loss risks because there is nothing which is going to be done and it ends in fail since the director is informed and knows what should be done he's directing people in a very right way uh, weaknesses include limited idea sharing there is none to share ideas you tell them do this they do there is no discussion also it gives no room for any uh, we know that we learn from challenges so if you tell someone to do something there is no way of learning there is no way of thinking so there is a limitation of learning the last but not the least uh, management style is discussing I get, I, I think everyone gets what it is. It's an interaction and collaboration among employees. It allows sharing and exchange of ideas. Uh, it also allows critical thinking through challenging ideas. The more people discuss, the more challenges they get, the more critical ideas they find at the end. So it has some strengths and weaknesses, but I would rather start on strengths. It allows open communication. People are communicating, which allows exchange of ideas, and it allows reaching critical decisions. Before something is done, people get seated and they discuss about that. They get to, uh, to find an agreement on critical decisions, and those should be put in practice. The weakness, I tried to find that it takes long time. It is difficult to manage time. There is no time management because you never know how long the discussion will take. It can take a month before you conclude that something was very, very urgent. For, for example, it was needed in a one week period, but you took a month discussing. Uh, it also creates misunderstanding. I know, I think you have seen somewhere people discussed and it was very difficult to find an agreement. And that's an issue when this uh, style is used in management. So my, my, my guess is that you get everything that I present to you, you understood the management functions, you understood the management style, and I'm very confident that you're going to apply them as you help the company develop. Thanks a lot for your attention.